spending more time at home again, now is the perfect time to declutter and have a little bit oh, of a clear out. You done any it? of it? I need to do it. I am like the you worst. Haven't I've in got any so of much... the lockdowns? No, no, I didn't call me bothered. What are these babes? It's so, I was baking. It's so therapeutic, though. <laughs> no, uh, Eugenie, nice. Georgina Burnett's joining us with a uh, organisational masterclass. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Alison, I'm shocked and disgusted by I'm your attitude. I'm so sorry. Um, but it will all change. <laughs> right too. It I, will I change so. by the end of this masterclass. <laughs> So if your resolutions, new resolutions have already gone by the wayside, make this the one that sticks, a clutter-free year. So I've got my top three tips. First of all, do a home audit. Go around each room, work out what needs to change, what, where your weak spots are, where do you tend to be messy, and then prioritise those rooms. So the one that you may spend the most time in, or perhaps the one that causes you the most stress, you're going to do those ones first, and then schedule, schedule, schedule. So if you're at home, um, if you're furloughed, you've got loads of time, you might be able to do one room per day, so put them in your diary. Um, but if you're homeschooling and you're working from home, you might only manage one per month, and that's okay. Just make them realistic deadlines lines and goals. So let's start with the front door. Uh, with a lot of us, if you've got a staircase, it's often by the front door, it attracts clutter. So what I use, I bought this ages ago, it's a wicker stair basket. Oh, look at and that. this just sits on the stairs. Oh, I know, it's, it's brilliant, amazing. isn't it? Uh, it's a bit embarrassing what I've got in there. <laughs> pair of what Christmas you socks, you know. Um, it's, so I'm not showing you what I've got in there. Um, <laughs> uh, just realised. I love it, it's um, amazing. But anyway. <laughs> It's brilliant, isn't it? So this sits on the stairs. It's, it's, you know, it can be quite dangerous to have bits and pieces on the stairs. So this is great. It all keeps it in one place. Once a week, I take it upstairs and I just put everything away. But if you don't want to splash the cash, um, you can make your own, of course. I've got two boxes here I've stuck together. I've made one slightly shorter. So you stick that one at the top and then cover it in some nice cheerful paper. And that works just as well on your stairs as well. Um, also, um, I think you treat your home a bit like a business. You know, you, if you were going into the office, you'd have an in and out tray. Why not do it at home as well so this is actually a perfume gift box that I've used and I've stuck the um, base to the lid there both the open bits there and then put in and out on the front I've used um, picture framing tape but you could use a bit of fabric you could use some uh, packaging tape and that just means that I can keep on top of the sort of receipts and the paperwork and that kind of thing that clutter as well uh, now next up by the front door at the moment we've got things like sanitizer we've got masks we've got all sorts so I've been digging out some nice kind of attractive boxes because you want this to be a long-term thing that you're going to keep on top of things so it can't be just a quick fix if you want to make your own this is just a little uh, gift box left over from Christmas do you know what my husband left his best shirt out for me to iron he should know better than to do that because I've just cut <laughs> it up and I've made it uh, stuck it to the lid here because it looks much better on here than it does on him uh, and then I've used one of those little butterfly clasps there and then I've got an attractive place to put <laughs> uh, well you know I don't like ironing what can I say um, so vertical storage is is something that I talk about a lot because wall space I feel is largely underused um, so I've got this one here now this is actually from Blue Dream Hanging but you can get them all over the place this can also be hung on the back of a door it's actually mainly meant for the back of a door which is also an area that we don't necessarily use and so you can compartmentalize you can get things off surfaces and I think that is really key particularly in the living room I think the living room should be your haven uh, you know when you finish in the evening you want to be um, clutter free in there there. Mm. So that might be the place that you're starting. And a great item here, for example, this is from Melody Mason. Lovely retro look table here, uh, but it's obviously got this magazine rack. It's just nice and compact. It's not going to take up much of room. So you don't need to have a big storage case. And also you've got a place to put your glass of wine, which is so important after a day of decluttering or even during the day. It sometimes helps. <laughs> and on that sort of filing <laughs> front so as good. well, <laughs> um, this could be like, if you've got a few of you in the house, so you've got a few things on the go, something like this works brilliantly um, because you can kind of, it looks great, but also it just kind of makes you feel like you're on top of things. And I think that's really important because I've got a confession here. I am an intrinsically messy person. Ask my husband, I, I can be, in incredibly messy so I have to work at this so I use affirmations I tell myself I write it down every day I am tidy I am clutter free I am on top of things and I'm not even kidding it really does work I don't tell myself I'm messing anymore um, so in the lounge another idea is just sort of storage box if you can find something kind of attractive like this what I love is squishy ones because you can basically shove everything in there and then shove them under a table because out of sight really is out of mind and you've got to make this 
is keeping on top of clutter easy. So that's really important. And that's particularly important when it comes to your bits drawer. You've got to see my bits drawer. You haven't seen it before, have you? It is that's a thing a of beauty. That's a nice looking so bits drawer. Used... Thank that's you, a good drawer. Thank you. Oh, I've, got, <laughs> I've got Tetra packs that I've used there. I've got cereal boxes. I did this about a year ago and I still keep it completely immaculate. I know exactly where everything is. So that's you know really important that you can stay on top of things. If you don't want to just sort of, have, sort of cut up cereal boxes, you can get something like this from Ikea for 10 pounds. I don't really like plastic stuff, but I think you probably keep this forever and this will help you keep on top of things as well. For the kiddies, while well, this is really important, so I've got these gorgeous little suitcases from Sass and Bell. Um, you get three of them here and they are 20 three pounds they are so cute my daughter loves them so that's going to make her want to put things away so i'm probably going to color code things for her because you know if kids are too young to read labels then you could do it by color you could do it by size you know like the really small rubbishy plastic things you get on magazines they go in that one the medium sized bits go in there maybe the lego goes in there you know make it easy for them to help keep on top of it as well so just some ideas there but it's going to happen alison this year you are going to be clutter free i want it all i want it all i feel like ironically you've like introduced a load more clutter <laughs> into my house i'm gonna have all of it i love it and I love that vase behind <laughs> you, by the way. Very, very nice. Thanks, Regina. Thank you oh, so I much. Oh, I know. Everyone loves this, don't they? <laughs>